Hi, this is Connie with Clicky Chick Creates, and I'm going to create a fun water card with you today um, for our Make It Monday post. So, first thing I'm going to grab is a piece of watercolor paper, and um, I do really love this weight, the uh, 400 series, and the weight on it is 140 pounds. I don't know if you can see that, but um, I get these on sale at Aaron Brothers. I usually will wait and stock up on their um, buy one, get two free sale. So that's always fabulous. So I'm going to cut this sheet down. I'm going to cut it to a 5 by 7. I'll say that again in case that cut out. I'm going to cut it to a 5 by 7. That's kind of a big card size. Um, but what I tend to do is when we buy our um, Christmas cards, we usually end up having a bunch of leftover um, leftover envelopes, these big sized envelopes, so that the 5x7 card will fit nicely in there. We'll give it room to move around a little bit in, um, but it's a nice big card, and I usually end up with a few of those left over um, after the holidays, and I like to use them up. So my uh, water card portion is going to be 5 by 7 so I'm going to trim down my card base to, I'm just using a regular 8.5 by 11 sheet of, um, of uh, craft paper. And I'm going to cut that down to 10.5 and, and then when that's folded that'll be 5 and a quarter, so I'll have an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then the other side will be at seven inches, so I'm going to do that one at seven and a quarter in order to have that same eighth of an inch all the way around. All right, so that's cut. Then we're going to use the scoring board at the cut it in half at uh, five. I say I'm not on ten and a half, so five and a quarter. Yeah, so here we go. Oh my gosh, I went off there. All right, that's a okay. All right, wonderful. So I can move these both to the side. Okay, and now on to the watercolor paper. So I just want to do some stamping um, and resist, uh, or not resist, but some embossing. So I have a couple different stamps. I'll show you what they came from. So I'm using this one, which is a Kaiser Craft stamp. It's called Decorative Lamp. It's super pretty. It's one that I've had for several years, and I love using it. It's just such a gorgeous, um, detailed stamp. So we're going to use that one, and then we also I picked this one up recently. It's called, um, it's uh, for My Favorite Things, and a, I'm using this one. If you want light to come into your life, you have to stand where it's shining. I really love that saying. I try and surround myself with uh, positivity. Um, if you've followed my blog or any of my cards and posts, I try and really keep a, a positive outlook. Um, my stance is we all have a bunch of yucks and mucks kind of stuff in our life. Um, it's a matter of uh, making lemonade with those lemons. So that's just the cheery, rosy colored world I like living in. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to stamp this. I used Versamark to juice it up. And oh, actually, before I stamp it, I do want to use some. Um, this is basically baby powder in a brush to, uh, or in a brush tipped uh, container to work as a um, anti static for stamping and embossing. Um, all right, so I did that. I already have it juiced up. I'm going to add a little bit more just to make sure we're good. And. Um, and if you follow photography at all, there's uh, the rule of thirds. So imagine a perfect tic-tac-toe grid on your um, on your paper. And I like um, situating things on those 
third line. So I'm going to imagine that there's a third line there, and that's where I'm going to put this down. All right, so then I'll push it, make sure it gets that ink. All right, and I'll set that aside. I'm going to use black embossing powder. This is just a black detail embossing powder. It's nice to be able to get that all back into the container so easily. a few areas that left a little bit on here and only because oh, I just scraped some off. Only because this is black do I try and pick it up a little bit more than I normally would. But I smudged that so let me fix that. Okay and there's some areas out here on the outside. Alright looks great. So I'm also going to, like I said, use this stamp, but I'm going to do that in gold. So I don't want any of the black powder mixing with the gold or the gold mixing with the black. So I'm going to go ahead and heat set this right now. Um, so yeah, I started saying as the uh, as I started using the heat gun that the drying definitely took longer, um, and I think it's because it's the the uh, watercolor paper. Okay, so now I'm just juicing up the sentiment, and I'm going to put that right about here. Okay, and I know that in the container, okay, I'll, actually I'll show you, I have these two gold, here I'll open the lid so you can see, I have that that I think looks so, so pretty, and I thought, oh, that'll be fabulous, and this gold, um, I think sometimes embossing powders are a little bit deceiving, um, this one I didn't think looked like much, I, I kind of thought it looked a little more champagne, um, but when I actually use it, oh my gosh, you're going to see how lovely it is. I use this one, but it was too hard to see. And this one's a sparkle embossing powder. It was too hard to see on the sentiment. Um, so using this one, it's a detail embossing powder. So again, on there, it looks, it looks a little bit dark. It looks a little bit more champagne than, um, than gold. But once I hit that with the heat gun, you're going to see... It's going to be like, oh, transformation, gorgeous. All right. So. Isn't that just gorgeous? And I know right now um, the gold foiling is very popular. So I just feel like that kind of has that look and feel. Um, but it's just the embossing. So it's super pretty. I missed a little bit of that corner. So I'll point out what I'm looking for when I'm uh, turning it and letting the light hit it. I'm making sure that it all looks smooth and there aren't any areas that look powdery or that um, the color looks different from where it's been set. Um, you want it to be consistent and you can see when the heat hits it how it starts changing and you know that it's set. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, now that that's done, is we're going to get to the fun watercolor part. So I'm going to use four different colors. I'm going to use Peeled Paint, Mowed Lawn, Evergreen Bow, and Broken China. And these are all Distress Inks. These are some gorgeous colors, and this is a really fun technique to use. So using any combination, I would say at least two Distress Ink colors, 
um, but definitely three to four just gives it a, a nice effect. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of ink, of each of the inks down, and I'm going to put them kind of in a little bit of an order and let them overlap a little bit. And that's just so that I can keep them in order in my brain, as opposed to just doing kind of four squares and going, oh wait, which color was which? Definitely helps. And the other thing I'm using is um, this watercolor brush. And this one is the, um, I think this, I forgot if this is what the tip on this is called, but it's obviously more of like a water brush color, water brush tip. But I have the other one too that's more of a detail, like a really pointy tip. All right, so there's a spot here that says push. So you literally just squeeze it until the water starts coming out. There it goes. All right, so I'm going to start from the bottom and then with the peeled paint down here. So I'm just going to start literally doing some pretty brush strokes, just going across. And I'm going to blend the two next colors. I need a little more water. Oh my goodness, I just realized one of the things that I forgot to do is spray down my paper. So just spraying it a little bit to give it um, a little more water for it to be able to absorb the distress ink. All right, I was wondering why it wasn't going on nice and fluidy. All right, there we go, much better. All right, then I'm going to go into the evergreen bow and try and blend those in a bit right here. And then into the um, broken china up top. I don't want it too streaky, but I do want it to have kind of, and I'm going to take some of that blue out. So I'm just going to squeeze and keep kind of pushing that other color out of there. So I've got a lot of blue in there. Okay, and I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that green down here. And then I'm just going to blend, like I said, blend these in a little bit more so that it's not such a harsh line there. A little bit more blue up here. All right. I love that. I think I'm going to trim it down a tiny bit on both ends. I will go a bit higher up here. Okay. All right. I love that. All right. And because I don't want to waste any of this yumminess over here, I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab some of this extra watercolor paper. I think I'm going to do a little bit of a, um, maybe like a bookmark shape. So I'm just going to do it about three inches wide. And I'm just going to have a little fun right now and pick up some of these colors. This will just be something fun, a little dashboard to add to my planner, just to be able to add some sticky notes to make it nice and beautiful, especially with spring and um, St. Patrick's Day coming. Just love these kind of green but earthy tones. All right, so that's going to set aside and to dry. And grab a wipey, pick up the rest of this mess. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to heat set this. Okay, so that helps it kind of flatten out. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is using Wink of Stella in gold. Just this center section on the lanterns. I'm just going to color those in a little bit. give it a little bit of a 
shimmer. So I'm also going to add some stickles on top of that. I wanted the, I, I don't have gold stickles, so I figured that was my solution, was to add some Wink of Stella. So yes, I do love having one of every thing in every color, but sometimes it just doesn't make sense. So this is one of those that I could just kind of make my own kind of light effect. So I really like that. Alright, so next what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of glitter, a little more glitter I should say. I'm going to add some sequins and just kind of make it sparkle a little bit more. And these are just uh, sequins I picked up at uh, either Joann's or Michael's. I think when it, they were definitely... I like picking up things when they're on sale, so I'm sure this I did buy a bunch in a different a bunch of different colors. And um, a while ago, um, I was doing swaps with my dear sweet friend uh, Lane Amen, and um, one of the pieces I had sent her the tag actually. Um, I had put a bunch of sequins with glossy accents to attach it, and when she got her tag, a bunch of them had fallen off. So since then, I try using um, I've tried using a couple different things, and I'm liking the way that the dots, the um, what are these called? Uh, ooh, that one popped off. The dots, and I'll just cut them in half for the little for the little sequins. Okay, let me take that one off. And I'm just gonna cut a few of these at once so I don't have to keep cutting. I don't have to attach and then cut and then attach and cut. Just try and make this a little more streamlined as possible. All right. So, as far as placement goes, I think, let's see, I think I want one over here, one down there, and one up here. So I might pull that one a little lower. And I'll put the little guys just kind of scattered around. I do love the look of sequins on cards. They just add such a nice festive look. Put one there and one over here. Just to kind of tie it all in. I'm going to move that over a little bit. Oops. Yeah, it's kind of a nice little drizzling. All right, so now to start attaching them. So what I'm going to do first is the big ones. And I'm just going to attach the glue dot onto the back of the sequins. Pop it on. Next one. The big ones are definitely easier because it's the full circle. And there's probably smaller glue dots, but I don't have them. This is my smallest size. So again, just using what I have. When I, I, I'll be honest, when I first started crafting, I would get um, immobilized and couldn't really start a project until I had all the perfect pieces to use. And so I became, of course, a collector for a long time instead of a crafter. So I got to the point where I realized that it just wasn't working. I, I would get the rush of, of shopping and buying, but nothing was getting made. So then I realized I, I just got to make do. And it kind of became a fun, um, it, not quite a challenge, but it did definitely become, become a fun way of 
utilizing what I had. I have some amazing crafty friends that are just really gifted with reusing and recycling and, and finding new uses for kind of everyday things. Um, so uh, Danielle Hunter with uh, Eco Scrapbook, she does amazing stuff. And um, Gina Z with uh, Gina Z and uh, Mistaken Identity. They both just, they're very gifted girls doing amazing stuff with um, things that are definitely around the house. I think Danielle has a pin that's just done amazing that's, um, it's like a kid's craft. And I want to say it's doing, um, making Easter bunnies out of toilet paper rolls, I think. <laughs> Super cute craft. And then, um, Gina has a great one making, um, making uh, flowers out of old socks, out of old tattered socks that are about to get disposed of. So lots of great, great crafters out there that are doing, doing their share to recycle and reuse and be, be gentle with our, with our earth, which I think is amazing. I wish I was, I wish I was more like them. <laughs> All right, so almost done here. Okay, last one. I know most of my videos I do a lot of, um, or a lot less talking and more just fast forwarding the video, but I hope you don't mind that I've been chatting up with you and kind of doing something a little bit different from the norm. Alright, last one. Forgot one over by the wet post. Alright, I think that looks gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Alright, so I have my base back again and I'm going to use my corner chomper. And I, I'm actually I'm not going to cut. I know I said maybe I was going to trim some of the edges, but I kind of like that, that it really shows that it's a watercolor. So I'm going to leave it as is. I'm just going to round out that uh, the two corners on the opening of the card. There we go. And I'm going to add some... Oh my goodness, I smushed the stickles. Luckily it's on there and I'll add some more. Oopsie. All right, what was I thinking? Clearly not, but it's okay. It didn't smudge like all over the place. Get a little there, but that's a-okay. All right, so I am gonna add some more stickles in that spot again. And again, it was the diamond stickles that I was using right in these areas. And that was on top of the gold Wink of Stella, which gives it that nice gold look because I don't have gold stickles. All right. Well, I love it. Hope you do too. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them. I hope you subscribe to the Clicky Chick Create email list. I do um, love reaching out and keeping in touch. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me either, either over on the blog or on the YouTube comments. Thanks so much. Have a beautiful, blessed, and creative day. All right. Bye-bye.